Today on the AI Breakdown, we're talking about how AI is transforming real estate. When we talk about AI transformation, we're really talking about three separate things. The first is how AI is changing how individuals live their lives, how they do their work, what jobs they do. On the other end of the spectrum, there is the societal level disruptions of AI in terms of its impact on democracy or even the way that we conceptualize our relationship to ourselves. But then in the middle, there is the impact on individual industries. While, of course, some will be more or less affected, almost every industry is now asking the question of how AI is going to impact what they do. And real estate is no exception. Now, what's interesting about real estate is that this is a conversation that's been happening for some time. Take, for example, this CNBC piece. It's titled, Artificial Intelligence is Taking Over Real Estate, and Here's What That Means for Home Buyers. The key points, they say, real estate companies are increasingly using artificial intelligence in every aspect of buying, selling, and home financing. Algorithms can now go through millions of documents in seconds, looking through property values, debt levels, home renovations, and even some of a homeowner's personal information. Said Compass's chief technology officer, the traditional agent would go knock on the doors of a lot of homes. Now AI helps you find the homes that are most likely to sell in the next 12 months. Now, what's interesting about this is that this was published on Friday, September 17th, 2021, almost two years ago. And so I think it's interesting to ask, given that the real estate AI conversation has started over the last few years, how are people within the real estate industry viewing this new wave of generative AI specifically? Recently, real estate VC Zach Ahrens of the company Metaprop wrote a piece called The Impact of Generative AI in Real Estate. One of the things that's notable about Zach's piece is that he is not focused on some future use cases. He's focused on the here and now. He writes, While there are numerous AI models available and new ones emerging, the most valuable for the real estate industry in the near term are text and image models. The first and biggest category of opportunity that Zach sees when it comes to real estate is around marketing applications. He writes, AI can be used to automatically generate property descriptions, virtual home tours, and even 3D floor plans. This saves real estate agents and marketers a significant amount of time and resources while also providing potential buyers with more immersive and interactive experiences. Starting with text generation, Zach writes, The early adopters in the real estate industry are already using these tools to accomplish their work in a fraction of the time it would normally take to write content. However, it's not just the time saved, it's also the fact that new agents and property managers can easily produce high quality and more accurate content about their properties, which can be difficult to do manually without significant effort and experience. By way of example, he shows utilizing ChatGPT to create a listing. He prompts, Write a listing for a three-bedroom, two-bathroom home with open floor plan, updated kitchen, and a two-car garage in a small subdivision. ChatGPT responds, Welcome to your dream home. This stunning three-bedroom, two-bathroom house is located in a quiet and peaceful subdivision. As you step inside, you're greeted with an open floor plan that's perfect for entertaining guests or spending quality time with family. The living room features a cozy fireplace, high ceilings, and large windows that let in plenty of natural light. The master bedroom is a true oasis with a large walk-in closet and an end-suite bathroom featuring a soaking tub, separate shower, and dual sinks. Now, notably, he hasn't necessarily given it all that information, and so whoever was using this would have to perhaps customize or cut out parts that weren't exactly true or that were hallucinated. But you get how there is a marketing tonal ease here that's going to draw someone in in a way that a standard real estate listing might not. Now, on top of just generating listings, Zach also says that text-generated AI could be used to personalize content, such as creating emails or property descriptions for potential buyers that are tailored to their preferences and search behavior. He says that things like ChatGPT could be used to analyze property and market trends and create informative and persuasive content speaking to those trends that could help a buyer understand the market that they're buying in. And he points out these tools are really good at creating multilingual content. So if an agent is working in a diverse market or with international buyers, that could be a huge problem solver and time solver there as well. Now, images are potentially even more disruptive. The first way that Zach points to is virtual staging. In other words, showing how an empty space might look with different furnishings and decor. This, he points out, is much cheaper and faster than traditional staging. Of course, there are also a new suite of photo modification tools that can be extremely useful in editing property photos and making them look more appealing. The example he used here has a photo of a house that has a very kind of dreary-looking gray background, but he went to autoenhance.ai and used their sky replacement feature to give it a bright blue, wispy cloud kind of view that looks much more inviting. Now, autoenhance.ai is a great example of a type of general tool that's now being retrofitted for a specific industry. From a toolset perspective, it's very similar to other photo modification or enhancement tools out there, but autoenhance.ai is clearly going for and thinking about this real estate use case. 
They advertise instant real estate photo editing powered by artificial intelligence. They promise list properties faster, increase sale price by 2%, and grow online viewings by 61%. In addition to that sky replacement tool that I just mentioned before, they also have a perspective correction tool that automatically fixes wonky angles, a 360 enhancements tool that improves 360 degree walkthroughs, an auto HDR merging tool that combines multiple HDR images into one, and a number of other tools as well. Now beyond just photo editing, Zach is also pointing to generative AI being used to create realistic simulations of different materials and finishes. The example given shows what a kitchen would look like if it had marble countertops and a new color painted on its cabinets. A few other examples of how image generation tools could be used that Zach gives include virtual property tours, design visualizations, and space planning, all of which can help architects and agents before properties are completed or even started, and provide, as he puts it, a more immersive and interactive experience than traditional 2D blueprints or renderings. Market.ai is an example he points to that advertises themselves as generative design for residential planning. The company writes, Market empowers architects, designers, builders, contractors, and developers to generate residential floor plans, navigate zoning codes, and explore limitless styles. The value proposition, they say, is generate concepts in minutes, not months. Stop spending months on schematic designs, input the constraints through parameters or natural language, and generate hundreds of residential floor plan variations instantly. So let's try to understand a couple of the themes that are running throughout a lot of these different ideas. One is increasing the quality of the content surrounding real estate transactions, writing better listings, having better photographs, etc. A second is about personalization and preference. For many, if not most, real estate buyers, especially when it comes to residential real estate, buying a house or an apartment or a condo is the biggest purchase they're ever going to make. These tools that give agents and sellers the ability to better help those buyers understand how their personal preferences might be borne out in that particular property obviously is going to lead not only to more sales, but probably better sales with more satisfied customers who actually understand what they're getting into. Now that gets to the second big category of opportunities that Zach sees, which he calls conversational applications. Some of the benefits he sees from these applications are still in the sales process. For example, he says that chatbots could be programmed to answer common questions from potential buyers or renters, such as property details, pricing, and availability. This, he says, could free up a real estate agent's time to focus on more complex issues. And he also thinks that chatbots could be used to qualify leads. Chatbots, however, also potentially have implications for once a property is purchased or rented. Examples he gives include rent payment, such as setting up automatic payments or giving reminders when rent is due, maintenance requests to help people get faster and more efficient service, mortgage or insurance recommendations, and more. A third category that Zach discusses are search applications, specifically made possible by semantic search. Zach writes, Traditionally, property search engines rely on simple keyword matching, which can be limiting and imprecise. With semantic search, however, users can search for properties based on a wide range of criteria, such as location, size, price, and specific features or amenities. For example, a user could search for three-bedroom apartment with a pool in downtown New York, and the search engine would return results that match those criteria, even if they don't include the exact words in the search query. Zach also points out that semantic search could be good at wading through the voluminous amount of content that real estate companies generate, and that it could also help enhance the accuracy and relevancy of property valuation. Now, Zach is far from the only person to have written a How AI Will Transform Real Estate article. Entrepreneur.com published something similar in February of this year, and they point to a slightly different set of potential benefits. The first they call predictive maintenance. They write, by analyzing sensor data from properties, AI could estimate exactly when care might be required and even go ahead and schedule the work itself. Another, they say, is home automation. And a third is AI market analysis, basically helping real estate investors crunch even more information than they could before to better understand what areas might be valuable in the future. Now, this piece by Entrepreneur also points out that there are some risks here, particularly when it comes to privacy concerns among tenants. Tenants, they write, may not be happy with AI monitoring their patterns of behavior. Now, while not everyone in real estate is rushing out to retrofit everything by AI, there is certainly a lot of interest in this space. Just last week, Elise AI announced $35 million in new funding for what they call the all-in-one AI platform for your property. Around since 2017, Elise is an AI management tool that helps automate leasing, resident conversations, service requests, payments, and more. If you do a search for AI real estate on Twitter, you'll find examples like Strip Mall Guy, who writes, We hear about the impact of artificial intelligence a lot, and the other day I started thinking about what a real estate transaction would look like if we used AI. He goes through how it might impact the purchase contract, the title report, parking analysis, dry cleaners, vacancy history, financing, loan documents, resolutions, taxes, escrow fees, appraisal, and more. His conclusion, the implications of this are endless. We're entering an entirely new industry, and it will come fast. 
like I said at the top of the show, every industry right now is just racing to figure out what AI and generative AI specifically means for it. What I think is valuable about going and seeing what people in those spaces are discussing is that it helps us get away from the natural optimism and sometimes over exuberance of the entrepreneur class and the investor class who's looking at AI as a whole. Hopefully this was interesting to you, even if you're not in the real estate space. And if you are, I'd love to know what you think will be legitimate and valuable uses of AI versus more trouble than it's actually worth. Also, let me know if this type of industry analysis is something that you enjoy or is a little bit too far outside of what you're actually interested in. In either case, I appreciate you watching or listening. If you're enjoying it, please like, subscribe, and share. Check out the podcast and the newsletter version. And until next time, peace.